I grew up with a Nintendo 64, a PC, and an NES, so I completely missed out on the Sonic franchise during its heyday. The first Sonic game that I really played was Sonic Adventure 2 Battle on the GameCube, a fantastic game that hooked me on the series immediately, so I jumped on board the Sonic ship just in time to watch it sink. I'm planning a retrospective of the 3D Sonic games to kind of trace the series' decline, but to sum it up, every Sonic game I played after Sonic Adventure 2 was mediocre at best and a flaming heap of garbage at worst, with one underrated gem buried in the mix. The last game in the series that I bought was Sonic and the Black Knight because I genuinely did not know they made any Sonic games past Sonic 06. I have not seen a single advertisement for a Sonic game since that travesty completely murdered the franchise. I had no idea Sonic Colors or Sonic Generations were even in development until they popped up on Zero Punctuation, and my first indication that Sonic Lost World was a thing that existed was when I saw it at the local library. The series was so far down the crapper that a new Sonic game had been released, tanked, and found its way to the video game Graveyard, all before I was even aware of its existence. When I played Sonic Lost World and found it was basically a Mario game with Sonic's face plastered over it, I finally accepted that the series I once loved was now truly dead and Sega seemed to come to the same conclusion. Having rebooted Sonic three or four times with no success, Sega decided to completely start over and relaunch the series as Sonic Boom, complete with a new cartoon series and a brand new video game, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. It's pretty safe to assume this wasn't the game that magically saved the franchise, considering this is one of the... TERRORS OF THE LIBRARY! Before we get started, it's worth mentioning that one of the big reasons this game was so despised is that it had a plethora of massive glitches upon release. Spawning outside combat areas and not being able to proceed, a ton of places you could fall out of the game world, an infinite jump glitch, you could skip more than half the levels, the list goes on. Nowadays there's about 1.8 gigabytes of patches for the game fixing all of the major glitches, making this the most heavily patched Wii U game I've ever played. It even beats out the patches for Assassin's Creed 4, an open world game from a company notorious for shitty QA. But for what it's worth, I never ran into a single major glitch beyond massive frame rate sputters. There's still plenty of bad to go around though, so don't worry. The game begins with Sonic surrounded by robots when he gets shot to shit and a bunch of rocks fall on him. So, the new Sonic dies five seconds into his first game. If there's a better metaphor for the state of the franchise, I don't know what it is. The game then cuts back to the day before, where Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy are chasing Dr. Eggman down a road with dialogue that is almost physically painful to listen to. I didn't mean that literally. It was a taunt. It's villainy 101. You can't outrun me this time! Blast you, Sonic! Alright, this is getting old. Let's jump ahead to the part where I ambush you. Yeah. I almost wonder if this is the developer savagely mocking the old franchise as a little meta way of saying, look how fresh our game is! So, first impressions. The frame rate is astonishingly bad for a major mainstream studio release, regularly dipping so that the characters warp from place to place. The combat is slow, clunky, and ridiculously out of place in a Sonic game, but I know they're trying to start new. And the camera blows ass. The camera waits about a full second before turning to follow you, so if you wanted to be able to walk any direction other than straight ahead, you're just shit out of luck. You won't be able to see where you're going. You have to constantly manually operate the camera every time you go anywhere across the entire game. Whilst fighting, or uh, kind of running alongside Eggman, the gang splits up. Sonic and Tails decide to head toward a large ring-shaped rock because it looks cool. They find a gigantic, ominous, obviously quite evil-looking door and decide they shouldn't open it. The fight by a creepy tomb. This day just keeps getting better. How does Knuckles already know that it's a tomb? Sonic and friends get surrounded by robots, and rather than just run between and away from the slow-as-piss robots, which they could easily do, Sonic opens the giant evil door of evil, and the gang spends several minutes operating all of the large and complex machinery inside, which they comment several times they shouldn't do, releasing the main villain from his prison. Not only is every moment of this opening so contrived and forced that you can't take it seriously, but there comes a point where the main characters are so dumb they just deserve whatever happens to them. Having all the characters call out Sonic for being a complete and total idiot does not excuse or change the fact that our main hero is a complete and total idiot. Anyway, the heroes release a giant Kremlin named Lyric who starts activating his robot army and sets out to take over the world. And yes, the main villain is named Lyric. I guess the generic world-destroying villains of all the previous Sonic games took all the good names already. Also, little tip to the guy who designed Lyric's tomb, wouldn't you bury the world-destroying evil who must be sealed away forever in a tomb that's really hard to find, instead of a giant conspicuous tower that you could see for miles? 
Lyric needs eight crystals to fully revive his army, so Sonic and friends must collect all eight crystals. That is the entire story. Some of the previous Sonic games ran into difficulty by overcomplicating their narrative, but at least their plots held your damn interest. The story of Sonic Boom is nothing but go here, get crystal, go here, get next crystal. The gameplay is oppressively boring. Every level consists of you walking through a series of completely linear, mostly empty rooms until you come across some type of object that only one character can use. Spin dash ramps for Sonic, fans and tiny holes for Tails, rocky walls for Knuckles, and balance beams for Amy. These things are all color-coded, too, just in case you're too dense to remember the one ability each character has. All you do is walk through each level solving quote-unquote puzzles, and each puzzle is just switch to the character we directly tell you to use so you can move forward. And because the game was designed for two-player co there's often multiple paths to the same location, so the game doesn't even care which character you use to get from point A to point B. The problem is none of these abilities of these characters are cool or fun to use. Sonic just goes up ramps, Knuckles just climbs on predetermined paths, Amy just walks along rails laid out in one predetermined path. Every single puzzle is just walking forward made slightly more complicated. There's no meaningful platforming to do, you're just walking from one end of the linear room to the next, and every now and then there's one obstacle in your way. Navigating these levels never requires any thought or effort, unless you count the effort to stay awake. I'd love to know what dumbass over at Sega thought the best way to reinvigorate the Sonic franchise would be to replace the fast and frantic platforming and exhilarating road running that's always defined the series with slowly walking across empty rooms until the game tells you to switch to one specific character who can walk into the next empty room. You have no idea how many hours of game footage I recorded and just threw out because nothing happened in them. Navigating levels is just walking... Walking, oh, a switch, I'll press it to open the door. Walking, walking, oh, a pink balance beam, I'll switch to Amy so I can open the next door. There's no thought process, you're not doing anything! The gameplay honestly reminds me of one of the really early LEGO games before the franchise got good, except even the dirt simple original LEGO Star Wars games had better puzzles on a faster pace than this. You move so slowly that even when there is some actual platforming, there's no fun or excitement to it. I shit you not, all of the characters, Sonic included, move slower than Mario does in any of his games. You have not known boredom until you spent 10 minutes slowly trudging and looping around an empty level or a completely empty overworld trying to explore when it takes ages to get anywhere. Every now and then the game sends you running along a road like it's trying to still be a Sonic game, but it still fails at it. All you do is use the shoulder buttons to move between three lanes that make up the road, and the game doesn't even explain that much to you, and steering these sections with the control stick is so sluggish you're pretty much guaranteed to crash into every obstacle. It's basically taking a minute or two out of the boring-ass nothingness to play an endless runner game on your phone, only it's even a poorly done version of that. You're left barely any reaction time to actually dodge obstacles, but you take damage so slowly it still takes concentrated effort to die in these sections. It still just doesn't feel like you're actually playing anything. Not to mention, even with the pad is the frame rate goes to shit every time you're thrown into a running section. Probably the worst part of the game for me is the boss fight with Metal Sonic, which turned into a 15 minute long running section over the same damn level a million times because the timing to reflect his projectiles back at him is so ridiculously precise that it takes forever to kill this douche! Here's how combat works. You chase down enemies that are much more maneuverable than you, trying in vain to punch them by mashing Y. There are no combos, so you just mash the Y button, punching at air until everything is dead. That's if you're dumb and not playing his Tails. See, Tails doesn't bother with all that punching crap, and he has a very fast long-range projectile that never runs out of ammo. So you can either chase down enemies, getting the crap beat out of you because the enemies don't flinch when you hit them, or you can pick Tails and sit in the corner, poning an entire group by just mashing the button. There is so much shit in the combat that doesn't work. The dodge roll doesn't interrupt any combat animations so often you push the button and nothing happens. Knuckles, the main fighter of the group, is the worst character to take into combat because his attacks have a ton of pauses that leave him wide open to attack. Piling on top of Knuckles' uselessness, every character has a special attack of varying degrees of usefulness, and Knuckles can burrow underground if he's standing on a very specific type of dirt that you only find about four spots in the entire game. Dude, you suck! The only useful special ability is Sonic's homing attack, by the way. The camera doesn't zoom out far enough to show you the entire enemy group, so you constantly get blindsided by charging enemies or beam-spamming projectile enemies you had no idea were there. 
Yeah, I'll just take the game's word for it that I'm actually hitting something here. And then there's the inner beam. Every character has a lasso that they can use to grab and throw enemies, but this thing is completely useless. You have to stand still for about three full seconds, completely open to attack, to get this damn thing to work. You can't use it without every enemy in the room getting a free shot at you. You can't even aim the damn thing to use it with any degree of strategy, so when the game forces you to use it to disarm shielded enemies, it's pure luck if you can actually grab the bastard shield or not. It's doubly infuriating and yet another reason to only use Tails, because there are a shit ton of flying enemies in the game, and Knuckles and Amy don't have any attacks that can damage flying enemies without the inner beam. Go, go figure, this lasso is the only original idea the dev team had in the whole game, so they keep forcing you to use this poorly designed burden. What makes the boring ass mash a single button combat even worse is the fact that you effectively can't die. Yeah, the old standby of kitty games that look down on their players. If you run out of health, you just jump right back up three seconds later with no consequences. The enemies keep the same health, the enemies all stay dead, dying just sidelines you for a few seconds, and the game just continues like nothing happened. In fairness, the game says you die if all the party members are knocked down at the same time. Also, in fairness, this is physically impossible to do. The AI doesn't die and you jump back up after three seconds, you're completely unkillable, and that's all there is to it. This takes no thought, this takes no strategy, this takes no effort of any kind, and actually, you don't even have to do the combat. As an experiment, I went into a combat section in the last level of the game, and I left my controller completely unattended. See, the one thing that the AI can competently do is fight the enemies, so I sat Sonic in the corner here, went to the bathroom, and just let the game run, and the AI killed all of the enemies for me. I beat a group of enemies from the final level by squatting and taking a shit. The combat is nothing but effortless, boring tedium, and it's so damn easy that you don't even have to play it. And I want to take a second to clear up a little misconception. I get a lot of flack every time I criticize a game for being too easy, to the point my TV Tropes page says that I'm a firm believer in the mentality of it's easy so it sucks, and it's not that simple. I enjoy plenty of games that anybody would consider too easy. Remember, I gave a glowing recommendation to the Iron Man Wii game, a game where you'd never run out of lives as long as you pass a simple quick time event. I genuinely do not care how easy a video game is. A game just has to be stimulating and fun. And when you have a game like Sonic Boom that is this damn boring and devoid of substance, a lack of difficulty or challenge exacerbates the game's other problems. Boring combat is made worse by the fact you don't have to exert any effort to win at it. Shit puzzles and platforming are made worse by the fact you can't really fail them. Your only rewards for exploration and doing the side missions are combat upgrades that are not even remotely useful. The game's lack of difficulty makes the game even more boring than it otherwise would have been, and renders the entirety of the game's side content a complete waste of time. By the way, the only remotely useful upgrade in the game is the one that gives you a longer health bar, and you can't purchase that one unless you also buy the Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal 3DS game. I ain't paying 40 bucks for a longer health bar in a game where you can't die in the first place. There are eight NPCs with side quests in the overworld. One is just a brief fight with robots, one is basically just replaying the third level, and every other one is just wandering around the overworld, either finding objects or using your money to repair structures. Your only reward for doing this crap is power glyphs, and every time I was given one of these glyphs, I picked the one out that I wanted by saying, which of these useless pieces of crap do I have a snowball's chance in hell of actually using? Oh, I can get more rings when I stun enemies. When stunning enemies happens maybe once every other level. You just spoil me, game. By far the worst side quest, if I had actually bothered to do them, is traipsing back over the entire game world using this enhanced vision mode to find buried items to swap for more currency. You can't move while using this enhanced vision, and you're given no earthly clue where these items are. Forgive me if I don't hurry off to look for some shits I could give. This quest is given to you by Styx the Badger, by the way. Styx is one of the main protagonists from the Sonic Boom TV show, and not only does she only appear for a few seconds in the entire game, she doesn't act a thing like her TV counterpart. The betrayal is even stretched to the game's direct source material now. The overworld is a titanic pain in the ass, by the way. It's full of paths that lead to nowhere, and every level entrance is hidden behind about three loop-around circuitous paths. I got lost. Constantly. The hardest part of playing a game should not be figuring out where the game is! 
I can understand wanting to ditch the old gameplay formula and try something new. I can understand wanting to take the Sonic franchise in a new direction. But not only did they pretty much completely abandon the gameplay that's always defined the franchise, they replaced it with gameplay so banal and boring that it feels like all the old series substance was replaced with empty air. There's just nothing that's even remotely engaging. It's to the point that I'm loath to describe the entire game as even having gameplay in the first place. But so the gameplay is tedious and boring. I've played several crappy slapdash licensed games that had worse gameplay, were even more boring, and had even fewer ideas thrown into them. So what is it that pushes Sonic Boom over the edge into worst game ever territory? Well, check in for part two, and I'll tell you.